Any Ooh, spiders well. in your favourite, Kev? <laughs> any, sp- any spiders in my favourite? In my my next choice. Your next one. Hang on a second. Let me uh, let me double check. <laughs> let me let me think about that. Um, the answer to that is um, uh, ooh, which of the two should I keep the theme going? Um, uh, let's let's say yes. There is spiders in this somewhere. There bloody well must be. <laughs> <laughs> there must be one somewhere in this. Well, just Assume, say it, and then we'll, I, I can determine whether or not it does or not. Um, no, I don't think you would be able to. But I will say that it uh, is. This is. It, it's going back to turbos on very briefly, isn't it? It's kind of frightening that there are games out there where we've lived through the original release, we've lived through the remake. And then we've lived through the second remake. <laughs> it's 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 horrifying. I'm trying to think of a game um, that's been remade twice however, now. Yes. However, um, hmm. however, one. So there's been a lot of talk across these uh, across these hours. We've been chatting away very merrily on on the subject. There's been a lot of talk about the GameCube. No. Oh. Yes, um, from all of us actually, at one time or another, which is which is interesting, and so I'm going to keep that going, especially as we've had um, some uh, we, had, we had GameCube from Turbo, and we had sort of GameCube tangentially from Earthheart, I do believe. Yes, <laughs> um, I got this particular Namco game for it was pre-owned. It was sitting there in a game store in Eastbourne. And I was like, what's that? That looks cool. And out of nowhere, my good friend uh, DC, who long-time Sonic Rex people will know is actually Alzari in the in the comics, uh, he mentioned to me about this game around the same time and I went back the next day because we talked about it it was, it was so infused about it and I was like you know I've not done a game like this before that's you know it's it's a JRPG it's not the sort of thing I play but the recommendation was such and when I said that it was I'd, I'd seen that in the pre-owned he was just like are you kidding me get it so I did. That game was Tales of Symphonia. Ah. Huh? Tales of Symphonia is... Um, like I say, it's not the type of game I normally play. Um, it's a it's a big game. There's a big old time sink of a game. Um, it's, it says here on the back, uh, over 80 hours of gameplay... In this epic, emotionally charged storyline, and every single word of that is true. I like that you've gone and got the physical box for it to double. It was the closest GameCube game to me on the shelf, which is within arm's reach. <laughs> so I literally had. I literally was. I got it. It's like, it was convenient. It's yeah. It was. Con- it was convenient just to, to double check it. Tales of Symphonia is your atypical. There's a magical land. We've got. Um, we've got Yggdrasil in there, so we've got some 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 traditional tropes. But um, th- th- there's evil guys. We've got a sword. We've got a a sword wielding um, kid who's trying to find his way with the best friend, who happens to be the embodiment of religious hope, which is kind of awkward. Um, there's a whole heap of stuff to do with, with, with relationships um, and then then the veneer of the great quest you're on starts peeling away in great big chunks <laughs> and suddenly you realise hey this quest you're on to you know, to renew the world this, this quest is coming to an end pretty quick in the grand scheme of things, say this 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 angel seems seems to be something a bit off with this angel guy. 
Also, what's going on with all these these you know, magical so- stones, these X spheres? Man, it would really suck if the souls of if the souls of humans who have been kidnapped were trapped in these stones and the hero is like, oh, God, I've got this stone's great, it gives me extra power. Yes, it's power due to the fact that my mother is trapped in my hand. <laughs> it's... <That was> a... <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, it's... The, the bionic commando star. <laughs> I was going to say, like... I was going to make that <laughs> reference. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it was, there's the gem in my hand that I was like, I've got this and it gives me power that allows me to do this. Yes, it's because my mother died... And is trapped in eternal torment. <laughs> okay. Um, that gets awkward. And then you realise as you go through the games, oh, there's like there's like there's the there's these guys, are they the bad guys? Is this guy the bad guy? Uh, and then you get to the point it's like, hang on a minute, are we the bad guys? <laughs> well, according to the other side of the mirror. Because there's, it's the t- it's two worlds that wax and wane. So according to them, on the other side, this entire world of people, yeah, you guys are the bad guys. You're trying to make it. You're trying to ruin everyone's life over there. There's all sorts of crap that goes on. It's a game we talked about replayability just now. It is a game that you have to realistically replay if you want to see everything. At least three times. Because there's limited aspects. Um, there's limited time things. Um, if you want to unlock the various conversations. Conversations are a huge part of Tales games. But it really kicked off here in Symphonia. The character development. The little aside. You're just going around the map. And suddenly there'll be a thing. And there'll be... Sometimes they'll be voiced. Sometimes they... But most of the time they're not. It's just text. But it gets across the characters it gets across their backstories their histories it allows characters to interact and you learn so much more about them and you helps develop the relationships and of course the, and the more you develop the relationship the better your fight it's got a very in-depth system you can have it be automatic and just be on buttons or you could be really in-depth and control it manually yourself it's up to four player multi- multiplayer you can do a full party going on and doing crazy stuff at once. Um, there's a whole heap of really interesting characters. You've got Lloyd, who is this sort of stereotypical proto protagonist who is, you know, just really wants to do the right thing. You've got Colette, who's this religious icon and he's actually just really innocent but at the same time she's absolutely terrified of what this means because it kind of probably means sacrificing her life to do this so no one's particularly happy about that dealing with that when you get over from uh, over to the other world there is the Colette's opposite who is the chosen of that world, who will end up doing the same thing that that she's doing at some point in time. And he's very different. You've got all these characters. You've got got a clumsy ninja who's actually a a, a real sweetheart. Um, You've got a young girl who's actually probably older than most of them. She's just trapped forever in this body of a kid. You've got a, a strange prisoner... Whose hand, whose hands are, in, whose hands are manacled through choice, and he's done something dark. And there's, you know, but he seems a good guy. What's going on? There's so many different things. The music is beautiful. The uh, the character choice, the moments that you you actually get where you can decide where things go. You can choose to have your your heart's desire slash soulmate or what have you be anybody on your party people do come and people do go there's various times where you, you'll do something and suddenly it's oh no oh crap lots of dark stuff happens in this game or you, you uncover the fact that you know the thing you've just done or oh, actually it maybe that's not such a good thing um, it's it really is a, an incredibly enjoyable game a very deep game it's difficult to get going with it because 
if you're starting from scratch and you have like no recipes and you're <laughs> just trying to get out of the blocks take maybe takes a little while but once you've got a few things underneath your belt um you really are able to start you know, getting into and and enjoying things but there, there's literally all sorts of little subplots going on on both sides of uh, on both sides of the uh, the coin for the uh, the two worlds, like I say, it's, it's double disc for a GameCube game. There's a lot going on in it. Um, the HD the HD quote remake had problems. I have not played the sequel, which happily tells you that your hard work that you did is seen as a bad thing by the people of your world <laughs> so you, you what, find what, out that hey for? hey actually actually uh, everybody hates you now hey, for I... no reason for no reason but but there's a lot of misunderstanding and propaganda and it turns out that everything's bad but even then the story for that follows on directly you can you can choose who you chose in the first game um, but it, it's great it really is it really is great there's there's so many moments there's so many twists some of them are obvious but that doesn't necessarily mean they're bad and i if you're looking for a if you're looking for a tales game very specifically if you're looking to try and get into that franchise symphonia is definitely the one to do there's a lot of tie in stuff there's an animation there's mangas you can get into too there's all manner of audio dramas so it's to expand upon stuff. Uh, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of happy moments. Uh, Perseia, there's there's a whole thing, there's a whole sub story where Perseia, the girl, the axe wielding woodcarver girl, who is say trapped in this the body of this child with somewhat amnesia. The only way they can proceed is, oh, you've got to. This, this theme park is in trouble. We we need a new ma- we need a new mascot. Hey, you there? Dress up in this costume. It's like, do I have to? Yes, save the day. And it's just Perseo going around in the Klonoa costume <laughs> <laughs> for, for for an entire adventure where you unlock this as well. And just like, oh, how are you feeling? And this is very, really bored, bored, monotone voice because there's no emotion. But it's like, well, who? <laughs> it's just <laughs> there's, there's lots of very funny moments, lots of very tragic moments too. Because I, um, this is on my list of I need to play this at some point. Right, but it's so not- we're, we're streaming this at some point. Yeah, and I'd like it would be great if we can get like multiple people on this thing. Um, and obviously it's something that me and Double Cross will be doing, but there's the option there via the various services to get other, get other people if they wanted to. So if you wanted to be involved, I would be very happy to do that. Maybe. It's actually... The thing is, I have actually played another Tales game because I got another one... I got Tales of Barisia, I think it's called, um, in like a Steam deal or something. Something like that, yeah. yeah. And I played that one, and like I can see the dark theme stuff. I mean, Barisia is... The first moments of Barisia, your main character loses her brother to the father figure she had, who murders him and tries to kill you, but is unsuccessful. But because you've been injured, you're now getting corrupted. So we're going to leave you rot in a jail for several years. And the only thing that's on your mind is revenge. And that's how the game begins. And I'm going to tell you, it doesn't have a happy ending either. Yeah, a lot of Tales games start with your your character is very nice. Guess what? The carp is being pulled out from under the big time, and it's completely unfair. Oh yeah, I mean, it's like, are you saving the world? Well, piss off. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty a lot of it. that. There's so a lot of that. This is the thing. I've always been told that one the um, symposium is the best of yeah. everything. So it's one I've been okay. Now that I've played that one, maybe I should try this one as well. But yeah, um, it, I still never understood. I completed Barisia, still don't understand the combat system. 
I have played <laughs> through Symphonia. I think, considering the length of time of that game, I have played through it. At one point, I played for it back to back three times in a row. Oh, really? Jeez. Yeah. I have a poster for the Japanese DVD release of the anime on my wall in the corner. Behind me on my shelf, among other things and amiibos and what have you that people have gifted me over time, is a series of Symphonia, you know, like Lucky Dip statues that I found in a shop when I was with Vija in Japan and was absolutely overwhelmed at the fact that it was like, oh my god, there's actual merch of this stuff. In front of me, on to the right, is is like three volumes of the manga in Japanese, which was bequeathed to me, and it's it's just it's beautiful. It really is the animated sequence at the beginning. By the way, freaking great! Just check, just check. You do anything else? Check out that. Nah, I'd rather play the game. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just anyway, get so that is that is my well, technically number two. Let's say on you, the list, but I it's think, not really. I think mine's the only one game. in any order. Fame. We go with anything. Anything. But you'll need to sign a waiver first. You're listening to Radio Redux.
What is your final game of this particular five list? Well, Mr. Earthart. Minor in order. So this is my favourite game of all time. And when I tell people the main character of this game, most people will try and guess which game it is. And no one has ever got it right so far. Okay, there's, here's a game, lads. Come on. <coughs> so, right. the main character of this game... Well, you guys already know this. I know Shadow Fox knows, so I told him last I th- week. <laughs> I think I had a rough guess of around... The, was, I know it's one that you've mentioned to me I, before. I've mentioned it to everyone before, but the game... The game main game's main character is Mr. Nintendo himself, Mario. Mm. So, any guesses of the game? Mm. I mean, we got like what? You got at least uh, two games. Thirty-five we've got, we've been, years there's, of there's, content to work with. There's a. I mean, if you t- tied everything, about two hundred and five games. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So, here's the thing. I'm not actually a massive Mario fan, but. There is one particular series, well, two series actually, um, that I love, and the main theme of, between them is they're both RPGs. <laughs> um, okay, so it's either gonna be uh, a Mario Luigi it? game or a Paper Mario game. Correct. Um, and to be fair, um, I- Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story is also very high up on my list, but it is uh, there is one. And I think this, for me, this is one of the greatest games of all time. And I really want to go back and replay this again. And I've finished it about three or four times already. And it's got a Is it Thousand Year Door? It is Thousand Year Door. Ah, I thought so. <laughs> That's there a is, fair one. There is so much to love about this game. And while it does have its critics, I think most of its critics are purely because they've got blind nostalgia for something else. In my opinion. There, there are some people I've seen with fair criticisms, but generally this is... I mean, most people consider this very beloved and are very angry that um, the series has basically been destroyed by Nintendo. It's not because, it's not a case of it being destroyed. It's the, that their experimentation no. did no. damage. No, 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 no. They demanded all creativity be removed so that no original characters can be made with the exception of, you know, a paint can or a sticker. Uh, They demanded that gameplay be pared down so that JRPG enthusiasts would be deterred from the game. Anyway, this is going on around about other games. (laughs) Yeah, talk about the game that you love. Don't talk about the games that you hate. It was mismanaged. Let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. Um, Purposely mismanaged, though. Um, So... Why do I love this game so much? Co- well, okay, let's take all the sections of it. Combat, lovely combat system. Um, it was kind of an advance on Paper Mario, which was a, a simplification of Super Mario RPG, which was just announced that it's getting a remake. Um, but Paper Mario's system was very simple. Uh, you have two actions, jumping and hammer, uh, plus you know items and stuff. But it's not just you can just do one of those two actions. They have uh, something which they call, um, I think it's action abilities. So when you jump on an enemy, if you hit the A button at the time you strike them, you bounce off them and do another jump. It creates a little bit more interactivity with the turn-based system. Um, With the hammer, you hold back the stick until you've got just enough power and then you leave it back down on the enemies. Um... But that's not all. One of the really nice things they introduce with the system is the way that your special abilities work. And that is, you have an audience watching your battles at all time. And it's one of the really nice aesthetic choices. All of your battles are performed on stage to a live audience. And the better you do, or the more you show off, the more special powers uh, energy that you get back. And as you progress with the game, you level up, and your stage gets bigger, you can get a bigger audience. But that audience can also interfere with the show occasionally. You can get people who throw stuff at you. Some of it might be nice, some people might throw you money or healing items. Other people, not so much. Maybe there's some enemies in the audience and they throw a, you know, a rock at you because they're dicks. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's such a fantastic system. And while throughout most of the game, you know, it, it's just a system, you know, to show off everything going on. 
There's occasions where bosses will interact with that audience. The very first major boss of the game, once you beat them, because they don't have much HP, we're like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna go off, and then suddenly comes back and eats half the audience to regain half their health back. And then you have to do a second phase of the fight. Um... So yeah, the combat is fantastic and the variety of enemies and tactics you can use um, and they've also uh, advanced the partner system from the previous game brilliantly, whereas they're now just full characters with health bars and stuff. So, yeah, combat's amazing. Visuals, I mean Paper Mario, it's got its own visual style. Now that style has continued on, but one of the things I really like about the style for this one is that First of all, it's, you know, at the time it's very unique, but what's also quite nice is the paper aesthetic is only played up to the audience for the most part. More recent games is like, oh yeah, everyone knows everything's made of paper. The original games didn't have that. The paper stuff was used as gags and the characters didn't know they were made of paper. Now, Paper Mario did, uh, Thousand Year Door did a really interesting thing where some of the overworld abilities you get did play with that idea, but they were considered curses. And it's it's a really nice touch because it's like, yeah, you shouldn't be able to turn 90 degrees and be flat so you can just walk through the scenery or, you know, turn into a paper plane. And it's, yeah, it's that kind of style and stuff that I really liked. It was handled so well. Um, and other than that, there's such a nice wealth of characters that play off the different types of, you know, you, you have your toads, um, but in this game you've got different kinds of toads. You've got toads that have obviously grown up in darker areas, so rather than being these white top mushrooms, they're black top mushrooms with um, that are very toxic and poisonous. Um and you have, you know, different kinds of enemies that have evolved. You have, like, bombs that have inflated to massive size because they just eat too much. Um, and they also introduce quite a few other species and stuff. The other really big thing, though, is the story. Because whereas the original Paper Mario played it quite safe, visiting, you know, your typical Mario worlds of your grassland, your desert land, your forest land, etc., the Thousand Year Door plays it up very differently and gives you these interesting scenarios. So, okay, yes, your first one is Grassland. They've got to get you back into the adventure. Second one is in a black and white forest where you control a small army of tiny creatures. The third area is a wrestling arena where you have to go through a wrestling tournament but you have to every single battle you're given a condition which you have to do or they won't let you advance and that can be something as yeah you know i don't want you to jump mario uh people are getting bored of seeing you jumping on people only use your hammer yeah jump man <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah he he does have to get a fake name for the wrestling stuff it's not jump man it is the great gonzalez <laughs> um not patrick el gran goro <laughs> So, the, there is a running gag, actually, but every single episode, Mario meets someone and they get his name wrong in some formal way. So, it, it, initially, it's like they've just misheard it. Martio? Is that you? <laughs> and it eventually just ends with it. It's like, ah, oh, yes, it's in the seventh episode, it's literally like, ah, oh, yes, I recognize your outfit. You must be the great Luigi. <laughs> Oh, don't be modest. I know you're Luigi. It's like, no, 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 no. The, the other thing I really like is this is the one game Mario has a personality. I mean, he does a bit in Paper Mario as well. But Thousand Year Door, they amp that up by giving him much more reactions. He still doesn't talk at all. And in fact, um, you know, there is at no point he talks in the game. Usually his partners will do the talking for him. Which sometimes he's like, no, 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 that's not what I mean. And he'll just shake his head and they'll go, ah, yes, of course. Um, but Mario's also a bit of a dick in this one as well. <laughs> which I kind of like. But the whole, it's one of the best games. It's got amazing story, really nice combat system. The badge system is really good. That is also true with the original Paper Mario. Again, it's specialised in this one a bit nicer. Um, 
there are extra challenges to do but not so many as they introduce in uh, Super Paper Mario where there was three different 100 enemy trials you had to go through. This one just has the one pit of 100 trials. Every 10 levels you get a reward. And if you get to the bottom level, there's a super boss. And, you know, everything works so well together. And this is one of those games that I would play again and again if I had the time because... I just love it. The personality, the characterization is so good, and it's just such a fun game. Sadly, this is one of the the only game on my list that you cannot get because it is a GameCube exclusive. But I still That's have the GameCube again. Yeah, but <laughs> I still I still have my original copy. It's worth a decent amount, but I'm never going to separate from it because, dear lord, do I love this game too much. Even if they make... like I did say at one point, this is the one game I would buy a Switch for. Now, I do own a Switch, but it was essentially a gift. So at this point, I still would not have bought a Switch because they have not re-released this game on the Switch. And yeah, for me, this is... For me, this is the best game I've ever played. It still influences a lot of the stuff I design and work on to this day but yeah Mar- Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is my greatest game of all time as far as I'm concerned No, I can understand how that would have been uh, your greatest game of all time like it's got so much uh, you know uh, involved with it in ter- especially in character uh you know, building on the characters yeah. in and that game. To be to be fair, the the Mario and Luigi series, certainly the first and the third game, uh, Superstar Saga and uh, Bowser's Inside Story, they do a wonderful job at that as well. And mm. again, it was after that point, I think it was um, around the time you had Stick Star and Paper Jam, <laughs> where Nintendo were like, we don't like this creativity because it's creating too many fan characters and there's too much deviation from core Mario lore, you have to pair it back, which is why a lot of the newer titles are so sterile. Um, you know, the, these are the games that really show, and sadly the studios that made these games have now been closed because they were forced to make games that were terrible, essentially. Um, mm-hmm. So it's it's really sad to see, but yeah, I if I had to choose one, Paper Mario is by far my favorite and i will happily play this anytime for over 15 years bringing you the best in video game music you're listening to radio redux Well, going from there, that's the game that you would happily ever play at any time. This would be mine. And it's kind of going back around to, you know, with, with uh, what Kev talked about, where it was like Sonic Adventure 2 being the game that made him a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog uh, there. 
uh, for me, Sonic Adventure solidified my love for the franchise. I was already a fan beforehand with uh, the original game, with the original uh, games on the Mega Drive and the Master System games that I was brought up on, more more so than anything else. Um, but it was Sonic Adventure that solidified my love for the franchise um, full heartedly by giving that character to not only Sonic, but also Tails, Knuckles, even Amy to a certain extent, and then introducing new characters, introducing a new kind of like uh, perspective to the world of Sonic the Hedgehog by actually taking it taking place on Earth. You know, it's stuff that was enlightening to me that this was the original designer's uh, percep- perception for the world of Sonic the Hedgehog to be taking place in the human world, in a, in a human world. It, probably not the human world, not the Earth or whatever, but it was still something like that. And it was that game that I always... Had, keep in high regard and always uh, and i've said this before i've said i've s- said this uh a long uh, a while ago um when celebrating sonic's uh, 30th anniversary uh i said that sonic adventure was my favorite sonic game of all time and it still is and it will be always be a game that i can always go back to fishing included fishing included <laughs> i, I will go back is into that, that. Bad in that game <laughs> Once you Fishing understand makes all it, games better. <laughs> yeah, once you understand it, you it's it's really easy to handle. It's not it's not that hard. It's like and many people are like, oh, it's just as hard as Sega Bass Fishing. Yeah, I've played Sega Bass Fishing. Yeah, it's Sega not Bass as hard Fishing either. Isn't that hard either. Yeah, so it's like I don't know. So people are just complaining for uh, nothing also, because <laughs> it's it's involving a boring sport. I, I will tell um, you, as someone who's had to go in with family to go fishing meeting up with those fishermen he goes uh, and them going like oh no we love that game because it's just like real fishing just a bit more exciting <laughs> so you know yeah right, done a because good job. It, it, ha- it gives it gives it puts energy into it with the the music and uh you know uh what 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 you're trying to catch you're not catching j- just like a regular bass or a regular you know uh salmon or whatever and it's like no you're trying to catch robotic fish uh, for for the most part <laughs> Uh, and a frog, you know. It's like, uh, why would you go fishing for a frog? <laughs> it's a video game. Go. Don't think about. Too, don't think about it I'll, too hard. I'll fish whatever I want. Yeah. Fish for a bike. Yeah. <laughs> fish for a, a fish for a gold ring, um, or well, well for an iron box. But uh, no, in in all honesty, like Sonic Adventure was was the package for me that kind of like. Uh, that I just in to- totally enjoyed. I loved playing through the Sonic uh, levels. I loved playing f- through his tails and knuckles, and e- even, even to a lesser extent, Amy, for how short her campaign is, is still fun because I I can get I've uh, you you Kev knows I did a twenty four hour stream of uh, playing th- completing the entire game uh, yes, to a certain indeed. legitimacy, you know. I did do a couple of actually, yeah. I did. I did do a couple of glitches here and there, for uh, for uh, getting to that one hundred percent completion. But all in all, I still had like a fun time, um, uh, going for it and and showing my dedication that I can play for it, play through it for a twenty four hour period and you know just go for it. I mean, you were there as well. Uh, or for for one moment, yep. Uh, during it, um, and uh, yeah, it was like I I I just love everything about it. It's like like it was such a fun game overall, and the and uh, you know here the music as well was just a nice little kind of like icing to it as well. Oh yeah, where as, it was as, like as much as I love the Sonic Adventure two soundtrack more. There are still some absolute bangers in Sonic Adventure One. Uh, Red Mountain. Mm-hmm. Uh, any of the final egg music is just great. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's like um, I mean, there was there was so much uh, like in Sonic Adventure, there was certain genres tied to the separate characters. Uh, with uh, that, with Sonic Adventure Two soundtrack, so you had like S- Sonic, and Sonic being more rock, uh, you know, kind of like rock. Uh, uh, Shadow being more uh, like uh, techno yeah. rock, uh, yeah. so, uh, as as such. Uh, Rouge being jazz, obvious. Um, uh, Knuckles, Tails and Eggman was... being like electronic. Yeah, t- yeah, and then the Knuckles being like the the hip hop R and B. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whilst with Sonic Adventure, it it was it wasn't to, uh, it wasn't uh, themed around the characters. It was themed around the stages, and uh, and then the the character themes were for the characters, um, and it was th- that first introduction of like uh, you know having these you know having these characters have themes to them having uh lyrics uh uh related to their kind of like uh uh character and their um uh like traits and traits or growth or whatever uh depending on the song and uh it was they were just nice little bobs and to everyone who uh who keeps uh, you know talking about uh you know these tra- these sonic tracks being a certain quote unquote genre of music that isn't a zo- genre of music sit down and shut up because <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about if you think you know you know you think that the uh, this the music that is being played for these for these characters and stuff like that is not is not real music you're lying to yourself because they are real music. They're done. They're performed by real artists. They're performed on real instruments, and they're written by real artists uh, or real musicians. But so T. Really, Lopes wasn't involved, Turbo. I can't possibly. <laughs> I can't possibly get behind anything that they're not involved in. Oh, oh dear. I, I so, would say well, one thing I really Jesus love about Christ. Sonic Adventure One, mentioning the levels, is the fact that you know some levels are designed to work with multiple characters even though their play styles are different like, yes I the there, there are like uh, like uh, certain stages that uh, has that and of course even some like some characters have exclusive exclusivity to them uh, as well and uh, and they do have like separate path like different paths in that one level as well so and it, go, it it kind of hark it does harken back to the old Mega Drive games where especially Sonic Three and Knuckles, uh, where you know you can go through the one zone uh, you know go through Angel Island zone as Sonic, uh, and that's one way of doing it. But when you play through it as Knuckles, that's a complete you can go through a completely different route uh, to get to that level's boss, act and then that continues different. off in a different section as well into the next act. Um. So yeah, it, it 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 has so much in it, and it's like it has so much in it, but it's not it's not uh, overbearing. It's not um, you know uh, extent. The only thing that's obviously extensive uh, to it, if you really want to get so much into it, is the child raising, obviously. And um, it's obviously I'm not the biggest child person, really, in all honesty. But I can understand the appeal of like raising your child. Getting it to max stats and, and forcing them to it, race. Yeah, <laughs> I am putting it into the races to dominate the competition and whatnot. Um, it's slightly and, a bit uh, of a gladiatorial uh, combat. And of course, the different kind of like collectible ones that you can find as well. It's like uh, it's you can have your little like clan of chow to kind of like raise and whatnot. Um, there's so much into it, and I love it so much. I still love it to this day. I, I would, you know, if you tell me things like, oh, uh, Turbo, play a Sonic game. All right, Sonic Adventure. There, boom, done. And it's like, let's get get started on that again. Um, and I've called, I've completed it so many times in my career, uh, or in, in my lifetime even, um, with it, with the uh, the Dreamcast version, the Game GameCube DX uh, version, the uh, Xbox Live Arcade version, the PlayStation Network version, the Steam version. Oh, like if it if it got re-released again on Switch, I would complete it in a heartbeat, no doubt. So there you go, Sega. There's a challenge. 
You know, put it, put re-release it on Switch. I'll complete it again for you. Don't tempt them. <laughs> they <laughs> might. Say, hey, if they want my money, yeah. they know where to find it. Where's that HD remake? Uh, well, I mean, that again. I mean, I I would like that. I would I, if they if that was on the table, I would be all for it. But really, in all honesty, I know how resource you know how how much resource because I've seen it before with the Resident Evil uh, series where Resident Evil Two remake it had so it, like the development for that was so long and it's like trying to get off the ground to begin with and then working on it. Yeah, it takes a long time to just like get the 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 encouragement of investors to be you know into it and agree, and greenlight it for that matter uh so you know don't know when it, if they do gr- do it great but i'm not i'm not gagging for a remake because you love the original sure. enough i'm happy with the original uh but if there is ever a remake and it is done well then I'll probably love it just as much as the original, if not more. Just like how uh, the uh, the Resident Evil remake, I love more than the original. So, but we don't live in that timeline just yet. But who knows? Only time will tell. But nope, Sonic Adventure. My, uh, well, in this order, it is the top <laughs> game. It's still my favorite Sonic game of all time. It's a good one. Though. I still love it to this day. It, uh, it's a good selection. A good choice. Yeah. I so, yeah. finally went around and played it recent, or at least started playing it recently. Oh, it does seem like there is a. Well. <laughs> it was, and there there is a lot of it there. I didn't quite. Re- I I was kind of a bit surprised by how I knew there was a lot, but by how much.
You're listening to Radio Redux, part of the LMC block on Radio Sega. Tune in every Sunday at 7pm for more.